What was the Battle of Ramry Island? How did two battalions of Japanese soldiers lose this battle without ever engaging Allied soldiers? Why were those soldiers even there, seemingly abandoned by their country? And is this story a wartime myth, or did it really happen? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, former soldier, Marine Corps scout sniper, history professor, historian and book author, and we will answer these questions and other issues on this segment of Forgotten History. Most people know about the USS Indianapolis, the United States heavy cruiser sunk in 1945, where 1,100 men went into the sea and only 316 survived nearly a week of relentless shark attacks. But few people know about the man versus nature struggle in Burma, where another horror played out, one that is almost beyond belief. From January 26 to February 22, 1945, an episode rivaling Stephen King played out in the mangrove swamps of Ramri Island on the south coast of Burma. Today that country is called Myanmar. Burma was a major part of the British Empire, and it had been occupied by Japanese forces since 1942, as they planned on invading India along the famous Burma Road, among other locations. But in 1945, the British returned to Burma to retake the country and tried to recapture Ramri and its nearby island, Chaduba. On January 21, the 26th Indian Division attacked Ramri as Royal Marines from 3 Commando Brigade occupied neighboring Chaduba Island. The Japanese garrison of Ramri consisted of the 2nd Battalion, 121st Infantry Regiment, under Colonel Kenichi Nagazawa, part of the 54th Division, with artillery and engineer detachments as an independent force. These units had been cut off from the outside world for months and basically left to fend for themselves. The British troops arrived on Ramri Island on January 26, 1945, to construct a new airbase. But first, they had to push the Japanese off the island that had already claimed it. After a short, bloody, but victorious attack against the Japanese, the British troops were able to force nearly 1,000 enemy soldiers into the 10-mile-long mangrove swamp. The Japanese soldiers retreated under Colonel Nagazawa to reconsolidate their force and plan their counterattack. Many were already dying of illnesses, dehydration, dysentery, and malnutrition, even before they entered the swamp. During their retreat, the wounded and sick soldiers were the first to be attacked by the crocodiles as they fell behind the main force. It appeared that the crocs stalked the trailing formation and would strike the men at the rear, systematically removing a few at a time. Then after a few days, the crocs suddenly appeared en masse out of nowhere Estimates were several hundred, ambushing their victims, tearing into the staggered trail formation and dragging them in onto the water. From the stories of the Japanese survivors, a horror story that seemed totally unbelievable unfolded. Statements described the surviving soldiers climbing into the trees, strapping themselves in, sometimes only 10 to 30 feet above the water. Soldiers who were less than 10 to 15 feet above the water were pulled down as the crocodiles, some measuring well over 20 feet in length, leaped upward to grab them, pulling them down. Those soldiers too high in the trees for the crocs to reach still became victims. The venomous snake and spiders, malaria and starvation were also their enemies. Then another terrifying reality presented itself. Being intelligent creatures, the crocodiles realized that they could not reach the men higher in the trees. Night and day, without respite, for almost a month, as the men starved and died suspended in their harnesses, the terror continued. The crocodiles then approached the trees in groups and, whether by design or just due to the feeding frenzy, began using their tails with their weight and strength to hammer the trees and several crocs taking turns, according to statements. Their objective was to shake the abundant food supply out of the trees, and it was successful. There were even after action murmurings of Japanese soldiers cutting the flesh of their dead comrades, resorting to cannibalism to survive, and this had been previously documented before this event. The British, who had driven the Japanese into the swamp, listened. They heard the screams, the rifle shots, grenades, and the hammering noises, 
that they learned later were the crocodiles up against the trees with their massive tails and bodies which lasted night and day without end. At times the noise was deafening. The terrified soldiers dripped blood and sweat into the crowded confines of the mangrove swamp, further exciting the crocodiles and possibly increasing their numbers as other crocodiles joined in the feeding frenzy. Several British soldiers said that they could even see the crocodiles preying upon the Japanese soldiers in the swamp. Despite their hatred for the enemy, many British soldiers openly prayed for the Japanese trapped in the swamp. A loudspeaker was brought forward, and a Japanese-speaking soldier, not sure if he was a British speaking Japanese soldier, or if he was a captured Japanese who spoke English, did speak to the men. Quote, if you come out, we will help you. Surrender and live. We will help you. End quote. The problem was that the only way out was by moving from treetop to treetop, never coming close to the water, which was three to six feet deep. Due to the rising and lowering tides coming out of the swamp, this was not a possibility. The estimate is that 500 Japanese soldiers are believed to have survived and fled the mangrove swamps, taking advantage of the mass of crocs congregating on one end to feed on the bodies of those dead soldiers who either fell or were cut loose by their comrades to fall down into the water. The best reports we have were that 20 of the Japanese soldiers who managed to navigate through the trees and later come out were captured by the British soldiers who had set up a perimeter around the dense jungle. It is reliably believed that at least another 500 of the men never made it out of the swamp. One witness, British soldier Bruce Stanley Wright, wrote, That night of February 19, 1945, was the most horrible that any member of the motor launch crews ever experienced. The crocodiles, alerted by the din of warfare and smell of blood, gathered among the mangroves, lying with their eyes above the water, watchfully alert for their next meal. With the ebb of the tide, the crocodiles moved in on the dead, wounded, and uninjured men who became mired in the mud. The scattered rifle shots in the pitch black swamp punctured by the screams of the wounded men crushed in the jaws of huge reptiles, and the blurred, whirling sound of spinning crocodiles made a cacophony of hell that has rarely been duplicated on earth. At dawn, the vultures arrived to clean up what the crocodiles had left. A couple of months after the event, following the interrogations and investigation, speaking with all participants involved, a special military tribunal was commissioned to conduct an investigation on the event. Japanese survivors and British witnesses were questioned at length along with the Indian soldiers. It was confirmed that the victims of the crocodile attack were in fact Japanese soldiers. Few remains were found, but those that were had evidence of dismemberment. In his memoir, An Odyssey in War and Peace, Lieutenant General Jack Jacob of the Indian Army recounted his experiences during the battle and this particular event. Quote, Over 1,000 soldiers of the Japanese garrison retreated into the crocodile-infested mangrove swamps. We went in with boats and interpreters, using loud hailers, asking them to come out. Not a single one did. Saltwater crocodiles, some of them well over 20 feet in length, frequented these waters. It is not difficult to imagine what happened to the Japanese who took refuge in the mangroves." End quote. The post-war inquiry included the statements of the British and Indian soldiers who all heard the anguish and terrors for almost a month. It would assume that the February 19th event was the mass breakout attempt by probably a couple of hundred of the Japanese soldiers, but only 20 survived the attack. This incident is listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the deadliest crocodile attack ever recorded in history. Subsequent to this event and decades after the facts, there are many historians and scholars and they, they totally contradict some of the testimony and they doubt the veracity of the recorded events from the investigation. This program only provides what we know from the record taken at the time and we stand by this proceeding. We hope you enjoyed this segment of Forgotten History. Please click like and subscribe for free. And please stay tuned and be engaged and informed. Send us comments if you have questions or even show ideas. And we will respond to all requests and comments as soon as we can. Thank you.